In this chapter, we'll be talking about the unusual tic disorder that goes by the acronym PANDAS. PANDAS stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorder Associated with Streptococcal Infections. Now, it's quite a controversial diagnosis within child neurology and even in medicine in general. And often when I give lectures about tic disorders and the subject of PANDAS comes up, it's, uh, it's met with a lot of uh, questions. Um, usually uh, people will interrupt me and, 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 and have some sort of opinion on PANDAS even before I get to the question and answer session. The reason being is that the diagnostic criteria can be very confusing for people and similar to just tic disorders in general. So the diagnostic criteria have been established by the National Institutes of Mental Health. And the first part of the diagnostic criteria is the presence of obsessive compulsive disorder and or a tic disorder. The second thing is having a pediatric onset somewhere between age three years old and puberty. An episodic course to the symptoms. That means there's an explosive onset usually of tics with resolution and then an, another sort of um, explosive onset of the symptoms. Association with group A beta hemolytic strep infection uh, something like pharyngitis, but not necessarily. could be also something like uh, ear infections or possibly a skin infection. And then association with other sorts of neurologic abnormalities. Now, the reason why this diagnosis is somewhat controversial and people will often ask me uh, questions about, do I even think it's a real diagnosis, is they'll pick apart the diagnostic criteria. First one is presence of obsessive compulsive disorder and or tic disorder. Well, if you remember from the previous chapter, we talked so much about comorbidities or things that go along with tic disorders. The most common one is obsessive compulsive disorder symptoms. Next, a pediatric onset uh, between three years and puberty. If you remember from early on in the presentation, I mentioned tic disorders in general uh, tend to come on um, no earlier than five or six years old, peaking at maybe around seven or eight years old. So this fits well within the diagnosis of PANDAS. Having an episodic course or severity of symptoms. Well, we know tic disorders, symptoms tend to wax and wane. 75% of patients with tic disorders will have a sudden onset. It's, it's, it's more unusual to have um, a slow, gradual onset of their uh, tic disorder. The association with um, uh, group A beta hemolytic strep infections, there will always be, when I give this lecture, several pediatricians or even infectious disease doctors in the audience that will uh, talk about the prevalence of strep infection and, and, and the frequency which children have strep throat. So the diagnostic criteria uh, are, are confusing and it's, and, it's not, and it's difficult to differentiate just from a general sort of tic disorder. So here's what I do with PANDAS disorder. When a family comes in with a, a child that has tics, and, and usually in my office parents will be educated and at least have heard the term PANDAS, is I'll keep it in the back of my mind as they're talking about things like having an explosive onset. Um, I'll ask about maybe having a strep infection and, and, and then the, the age of onset. I might do a, a couple of blood tests if I'm not sure if there has been a recent strep infection, something like an ASO titer or anti-DNA B test. And uh, those, are, those are tests which show of uh, having a recent strep infection. And then I'll wait to see what happens. When the ticks wane as they uh, go away, um, if there's another explosive onset and it seems to be associated with a strep infection, uh, then I'll start thinking a little bit more about this PANDAS diagnosis. Now the reason why it isn't as important to make a PANDAS diagnosis is the treatment doesn't change considerably. When PANDAS is studied in a scientific way, looking at things like preventative antibiotics, something called IVIG, intravenous immunoglobulin, or plasmapheresis, the evidence isn't very compelling for aggressive treatment. Usually the treatment for PANDAS is symptomatic anyways. So of the hundreds or thousands of children that I follow with tic disorders, I'll have a handful um, that I diagnose with PANDAS and then a very small subset of those where I might do something like prophylactic or preventative uh, antibiotics. There's a, a lot more information available, good evidence-based information available. I have this included in your uh, study guide and most of it's taken from the National Institutes of uh, Mental Health and I have a link there to their website uh, within the study guide. So for the next section, we'll be getting more into the treatment of tic disorders, including some lifestyle changes and on into some medication treatments.